Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 6 for January the 8th, 2023. We're still in Unit 2 entitled God's Promises. And our topic for today taken from our adult quarterly is Fear Not. The devotion reading is taken from the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 1 through 5 and also verses 13 through 17. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 43 uh, verses 1 through 21 and we'll be studying today from Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 4 and verses 10 through 12. Our key verse reads, Now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And that's taken from um, the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 1 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore examples of when God has led his people through challenges and troubles. Secondly, to embrace God's ongoing promise of making a way in the wilderness. And then thirdly, to thank God for the help and hope that he has provided in times of trial. We have two outlines that will be a part of our discussion today. Uh, the first outline is entitled, God's Love Extended. And our second outline is entitled, God's Love Explained. We certainly thank God for yet another opportunity. Happy New Year to all of you uh, that are joining us. We certainly uh, thank God for allowing us to not just see another day, but another year. And it certainly uh, has been by the grace of God that has sustained us uh, and kept us and here we are still studying the Word of God and so we thank God for that we ask you now to get your Bible and uh, as always we want you to follow us uh, we want you to take some notes we want you to be a good um, uh, students if you will of the Word of God we want you to uh, be able to do your own research and we certainly want to be able to uh, do our best to qualify uh, everything that we share with you uh, through the Word of God so we can see that we are not adding anything to the biblical text and we are not taking anything uh, away from it. And so we want to begin, uh, want to read a little bit of the biblical context uh, that is offered uh, in our lesson quarterly. And then I want to talk a little bit about the background of this book. Uh, Isaiah can be a bit challenging to study, but we want to do uh, the best we can in terms of uh, uncovering uh, what is happening in this text. So our biblical context is as follows. Uh, despite Judah's unfaithfulness, God never wavered in his faithfulness uh, toward them. God stood by his promise to restore the nation after the Babylonian captivity. We want to take note of that. Uh, so now that gives us some perspective of the situation that, uh, that surrounds our printed text. But God was assuring them that because of his love, there was no reason to fear. Even in captivity, the people of Judah were still God's people, his own creation. They were the natural descendants of the Israelites uh, whom God led out of Egypt through the Red Sea. God's word to the people through Isaiah was that he would uh, keep every one of his promises uh, to them. He would bring them out of Babylon through the wilderness and safely back to their homeland, Judah, the land he had given them. In acknowledgment for his blessings, God expected that his people would turn toward him and away from idols once and for all, and that they would be a faithful witness to the world uh, that he is the one true God. 
a lot of things that we could take away from uh, what we have read so far but if you don't get anything out of this lesson today I want you to remember that we are in a covenant with God uh, that is the, the the symbolism of this text if you will yes we are talking about the nation of Judah yes we are talking about the nation of Israel uh, but but uh, the fact remains that God chose these individuals uh, he redeemed them uh, his history says that he brought them out of Egypt right you all know the story and so what that should tell us today in 2023 that if you are ascribing that you are saved if you're saying that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior Savior you are identifying with covenant language right and so we have an obligation we have a responsibility and what has happened in this context uh, uh, Judah respectively have uh, uh, turned away from the laws that God have given them the Mosaic law uh, they have turned away from the commandments uh, and they have they had embarked upon serving idol gods and, and if you know anything about uh, uh, certainly the Ten Commandments and, and, and all of the ordinances and instructions that God had given uh, to them he clearly explained to them that you shall have no other gods besides me that was clear right but uh, uh, they they uh, overstepped if you will and they uh, uh, provoke God to anger and he caused uh, uh, two particular uh, military campaigns uh, with Israel with the Assyrians and with Judah uh, uh, and the Babylonian campaign which is what uh, we are focusing on today and they went into captivity right uh, nevertheless God is reminding them and, and reassuring them even though they have gone into captivity they still belong to God right and so we'll qualify this uh, uh, prayerfully with scripture as we go along but let me read a little bit of this the outline and sort of the, the, the makeup of the book of Isaiah so we can understand where we are but the first part of the book of uh, Isaiah chapters 1 through 35 uh, it focuses on God's judgment on Israel by Assyria, right? And then uh, the second part of the book uh, of Isaiah, chapters 40 uh, through 66, uh, focuses on the remnant return from Babylon and their ultimate deliverance um, in the remote future, right? So these two uh, different perspectives we want to make sure that we're clear uh, but the second part like the first begins with visions of the heavenly court uh, Isaiah overhears God sending messengers to announce that uh, Israel's punishment has been paid for and will come to an end you'll see that in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 through uh, 8 uh, but Isaiah's vision of God's kingdom is great because it includes the history of redemption uh, from his day until the fullness of redemption. Uh, this book also embraces the exile, the return of Jews uh, uh, from exile, uh, the mission, ministry, and kingdom of Jesus Christ, the mission and hope of the church. Uh, Jesus present rule over this world and the restoration of all things in holiness and righteousness so you remember I said we're in this covenant uh, this this term holiness simply just means that we have been set apart right for the purposes of God everyone that says they are saved uh, uh, that that calls on the name of the Lord as their Savior uh, you should understand uh, that you have been sanctified you have been set apart you have been declared holy right and so we have to make sure that 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 we uh, understand that that's a covenant situation right uh, we do that every first Sunday if you will when we partake of the Lord's Supper it reminds of a, of this covenant relationship that we are in and so we when we overstep as we tend to do uh, uh, we we will provoke God we will get into trouble uh, we might 
even end up in some form of captivity, physical and or spiritual, for disobeying God. Nevertheless, we still belong to God uh, because of the covenant. The covenant is a blessing because it binds uh, us to God, yes, but it also binds God to us, right? And so this is the language that we get uh, uh, even from uh, this, this key verse that we read from Isaiah 43 verse 1 the Lord is saying still to uh, Jacob to Israel that 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 they have been created they have been formed uh, 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 into or redeemed as a people of his they belong we belong to God we have been bought with a price right we are no longer our own we don't do uh, 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 or sacrifice if you will for self selfish purposes but we always have to keep God in our frontlets because he is the one uh, 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 that that initiated this redemption he was the one that brought us out with a mighty and an outstretched arm and we belong to him that's that's just the way it, that's the way the covenant goes so I hope that we understand that uh, but we want to get into this uh, first outline uh, talking about God's love extended this is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 3 and I want to read this um, from the NIV translation the Bible says but now this is what the Lord says he who created you Jacob he who formed you Israel do not fear for I have redeemed you I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Verse 3. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom Cush and Seba in your stead so all of this covenant language is to uh, help you to understand that they should not be afraid of, of, of uh, uh, the environment they should not be uh, 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 afraid of the trials or the tribulations that they are going through they, they shouldn't be uh, afraid or fearful of the circumstances uh, and, and that's very important uh, as we look even as today trouble is all around us it's on every side uh, uh, and so how do we remain hopeful in the face of all of these different things yes some of them have been uh, 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 that we have caused right we have caused uh, uh, by disobedience to the covenant we sometimes cause affliction to come up on us and then there are things that are going on around us that we we had nothing to do with right that we are not responsible for but even in that we should remain as a people of God this is all covenant language keep in mind God does not change right he remains the same and so but the opening words of the text but now uh, mark a transition from the message of chapter 42 which closes with the fury of the Lord's anger and punishment you can see that in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7 so God was angry that his people were, uh, were diso uh, disobeying him and 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 causing uh, uh, all of these different uh, adverse situations to come up on them God was not pleased by that so what God did was raise up the nation of Babylon to come in and buffet his people and to take them away uh, into captivity uh, for a time and a season uh, uh, but they still belong to God but by contrast chapter uh, 43 begins with a tender message from the God who created formed and redeemed and called Israel the message is focused on the enduring love of God and the hope and promise 
of the future rather than on the people's past sins right that's very important the message right when we sit under the messages right that are preached to us uh, even now as I'm sharing uh, this particular passage what are you listening for right what do you need at this moment how can this message help you how can I transmit this message in a way to help you understand that God still loves you God still uh, is concerned about what you're going through God is saying to you you still belong to me God is reminding you that you are a saved individual no matter what happens to you yes you may be chastened uh, 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 by the Lord but you still belong to him right this is covenant this is the beauty of a covenant relationship because God uh, God doesn't throw a tantrum and and, and, and throw you away because uh, 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 he's angry but in his mercy and his grace he draws us closer to him and uh, uh, when we have these self-inflicted wounds if you will God's love uh, 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 provides healing and comfort uh, even in the midst of circumstances so you and I should be listening for the comfort and the encouragement from the word of God uh, 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 if, if you are already saved right you don't need to be saved again as a Christian but you do need to be encouraged as a Christian so for those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior this message is salvation for you right that's what you should be looking for so we have ears for different things right but 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 as children of God and as people of covenant uh, uh, relation with God as Israel as Judah is respectively in this uh, 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 particular context God is reminding them that listen you still belong to me and the terms uh, of the covenant still apply Isn't that beautiful to know that no matter what we have done no matter where and how far we've gone and stayed too long and how uh, uh, muddy we have become God is saying to us uh, uh, it's not about your past it's about your future I died for your past that you might have a future Jesus said I believe in John chapter 10 he said I died that you might have life right and have life more abundantly more full more a uh, 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 consistent with the faithful promises of God and so we need to draw right from this lesson even though yes we are talking about Israel and Judah respectively but the context of the covenant applies present day so when nothing else could help God redeemed his people bringing them back from captivity and calling them uh, uh, by his own name watch this because they belong to him right so God is still saying I'm gonna bring you out of that situation I allowed it to happen right to teach you a lesson to demonstrate to you the covenant principles that I shared with you through the Mosaic law I gave you I gave you all uh, 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 blessings for obedience I gave you curses for disobedience these things were not meant to harm you they were they were boundaries if you will that you would not cross these particular boundaries and wind up in this particular situation and serving other gods is a direct provocation unto God it has always been that way it at all it will always be that way when we choose to put someone else uh, in the place of God this is something uh, Joshua says I believe in chapter 24 uh, helping Israel understand that God is a jealous God right and so uh, uh, he doesn't want us sharing ourselves he he already rescued you uh, uh, from the uh, and me from the domain of darkness where we served the devil uh, uh, for all of our days until the Lord redeemed us and brought us out why would we now compromise our walk with serving other gods when we know that that God is going to become angry about that situation but yet God is saying to his people here in this context that you still belong to me so as God's possessions and objects of his redeeming love Judah received divine encouragement to 
Don't be afraid. Fear not. Because of God, there was no reason for his people to be afraid. Let me say something to you about fear. Because it's, it, you know, if you watch enough news, if you hear enough bad uh, uh, news, if you hear a lot about, uh, 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 about a, a lot of hopelessness in the land, it, it tends to have an effect on us, right? Where we become afraid of our own safety. We, we become afraid of our own future. We become afraid of our own environments. And, and, and the other character trait that follows fear is anxiety, right? And we have to be careful. These things work in tandem. When, when we are overwhelmed with, with fear, then we become anxious, Right, we start having these particular attacks of anxiety, and these things are working in uh, in tandem together in our hearts and in our minds, and and deeper than that in our spirit. Right, this is how this thing works out. So we need the Word of God to combat these times that we're in, these times of hopelessness, and we can draw uh, 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 from our position in the body of Christ. As uh, Judah is being told here, you all still have covenant principles presiding over this situation, even though it's not good, even though you you think you've been abandoned. God is speaking, sending a word, sending a word into this environment saying, you all still belong to me. There is no reason for you to be afraid, but seasons of trouble either overwhelm people or make them stronger, right? So those who continue in their own strength are more likely to be overcome. You cannot do this of yourself. You cannot do this alone. You cannot do this without prayer. You cannot do this without a, 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 a well diet of, of, of the word of God. You cannot, right? And this is why the, the, the Lord is sending a word through Isaiah to these individuals so they can have something to draw from, right? So as we assemble to hear the word of God, we need to be listening for what we need. We need to be listening for how we can apply what we're hearing to our circumstances. Perhaps everything is okay with you today. The sun is shining bright. But what if it rains tomorrow? Are you prepared? Are you biblically prepared for the rain? Are you biblically prepared for the storm? Right? So, and, and this is what has happened here. And the Lord is sending words of encouragement uh, in a time where folk are desperate. Right? They're in, in dire need of encouragement. That all of this stuff has happened to them. Right? They have gone into captivity. They've lost essentially everything. You, you, you remember if you go on in the book of Isaiah, uh, when they are offered to return uh, to Jerusalem, they have to start over. Right? You lost everything. So we have to be mindful that God still loves us. Don't ever let the devil convince you that no one loves you. That's a lie. That's a biblical lie. Right? So we need to understand that God loves us because we are his children and we need to do all that we can to learn from the word of God so we can draw from our position. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an apostle. You don't have to have a, a fancy title. You just need the position that has been provided for you through the cross that you accepted when you said and you confessed uh, you believed in your heart and you confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. Uh, you are entitled to these promises, right? You are saved. You have every right to draw from the position that you're in. I want you to look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. And I also want to give you uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 you could should read all of that but but you should be familiar that there is therefore now no condemnation right to those who are in Christ Jesus and it goes on to offer some a wealth right a wealth of promises of the position that you're in so reread that right go back and look at that again and see what you are entitled to right 
as a child of God. But we go on here uh, years earlier Babylon had conquered Judah and kept the people in confinement. Watch this. But in God's timing, in God's timing, Babylon was overthrown by Persia. And uh, in, in time, Persia outlasted attacks from Egypt, Cush, and Seba. These are parts of Arabia. So God, God counted these as ransom for the release of his people. That's uh, pertaining to verse 3. So God has not promised to shield his people from, ever, from experiencing trouble. Right? He didn't do that. But he promised to keep and to preserve them in the very middle of it. Isn't that something? Sometimes we don't, and I get it, right? We don't like issues, trouble in our lives. And we think that when we have trouble in our lives, perhaps something is wrong. Right? That's not necessarily the case. Right? Some things, as I said earlier, we do bring on ourselves. And then there are some things that have nothing to do with us that we didn't cause. But they do affect us. They, they, they cause us uh, uh, some heartache and some pain. Uh, but God promised to keep us in the middle. God promised to preserve. What is he keeping? Right? He keeps our hearts. He keeps our minds. Sometimes we're looking for everything external. We're looking for all of these tangible things to encourage us and to, you know, that we want to excite ourselves in the blessing of all of the stuff that, that's around us, right, that we can put our hands on. But let me ask you a question. What about the blessing that's in you? Do you rejoice over what's in you? And when we do that, God uh, 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 miraculously preserves our sanity, right? God keeps our affections and keeps our loyalty intact. And we're able to persevere even though things don't look good around us and perhaps even in our lives. But God promised to watch over, to preserve in the middle of these trials, right? So, but the Lord, our Savior, loves us and is greater than all of our troubles, right? I was looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 13. I think I want to read that to you uh, because this, this particular verse has always uh, fascinated me. Uh, and it, it serves to encourage us uh, not to... To, uh, uh, to give up in the midst uh, even when we sometimes don't have the faith that we would like to have and this is not a deterrent I, I just want to just sort of set the table here that I don't want you to you know to practice this but I want you to be mindful yes we do need faith but I want to read this to you 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 Paul says here if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself, right? But if we pull a little bit more on this, we learn that this is a wonderful affirmation of assurance that although we are called to endure and be faithful, watch this, salvation does not rest ultimately on our faithfulness, but on that of Christ, right? It doesn't ultimately fall on us, right? But it ultimately falls on Christ because we know from Philippians chapter 2 that he was faithful, right? He was faithful unto death, right? So we have to remember that that's the reason that Christ had to come because those uh, preceding him could not sustain or was unable to be consistent in faithfulness but Christ Christ was the only one and so we depend on his faithfulness right 
because he endured all of it. Right? And he secured a name that is above every name. You should read Philippians chapter 2. And because of that, that, that sacrifice, that faithful sacrifice, God acknowledges us through Christ. Right? Christ, so he is the propitiation uh, uh, for all of humanity, for all of the believers. Right? And we should accept that. So I thank God that when he looks at me, uh, he, he, he can see Christ in me. I'm not trying to keep myself. But when God looks at us, that's why we pray in the name of Jesus. We don't pray in our names. right? So we want to be encouraged by this. And we want to be uh, able to understand what God is saying even to Israel. And keep in mind God has not changed question here those who have received the Lord's mercy should freely extend it to others what thoughts encourage you to be more merciful toward people who have failed or offended you so as we have received mercy right we have to show mercy right I know it's difficult I know people have cut you to the core they've hurt you they've done some things that really brought tears to your eyes really shook you but it's incumbent upon you why did those individ individuals do those things perhaps they were overtaken right perhaps they were blinded by the evil one that caused them to do the things but God is waiting on us to come and respond in a way that we pray you should read Matthew chapter 5 read all of Jesus sermon uh, in Matthew chapter 5 chapter 6 and chapter 7 right but you'll find in that sermon on the mount we have to pray for our enemies right I've heard people over the years say I'm not praying for them but you're required to you're required to because you have received mercy if you are a child of God, you should understand that. He looked, what does a songwriter say? He looked beyond my faults. And that's how we got saved. So we have to turn around and demonstrate that same mercy that we have received. And if you can't get over the hump, if I can phrase it that way, ask God to help you, right? If Christ could do it from the cross, and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We have to, in turn, do that and pray that way. All right, our second and last outline, God's love explained. This is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 4, and then verses 10 through 12. I want to read this from the NIV translation. The Bible says, verse 4, Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you I will give people in exchange for you nations in exchange for your life so I want to give you some scriptures that I want you to read and I want to kind of unpack this here uh, so we can understand this language here uh, that Isaiah is using uh, to help these individuals understand the position right the position that they are in but the grand biblical story is that God chose Israel to be a nation that received his laws to prepare the way for the Messiah I want you to look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 because Israel was chosen by God out of all the nations they were counted right they were counted as both precious and honorable. These terms should be understood as closely related, related to the concept of holiness. And again, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 3 will uh, further illustrate that. So Israel's identity was given to them by ransom, not through their own efforts, a concept that we who follow Christ are intimately acquainted with. So this is, uh, you can see Mark chapter 10 verse uh, 45 and then First Timothy chapter 2 verse 6. So this is all that God is trying to 
uh, help Israel understand, right, that that uh, uh, it declares that God's people are precious in his sight, right? So Judah's sin had made them undeserving of such honor, but God is forever consistent with his word. Love keeps no record of wrongs. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 and love covers over a multitude of sins. Uh, uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 4 uh, verse 8 but God is, is, is reminding them that, that, that they are his witnesses right? That, that, that God has chosen them right? God has honored us. Do you ever think about that? Why did God save you and me? What is it about us? Who are we that God should save us, should spare us when others perhaps were lost, right? When, 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 when God looked at how, we, how destructive we were in darkness, but he chose to bring us out. This is the language here, that, that this, this language of election. And we know this uh, as far back uh, as the Exodus, right? Uh, uh, and, and so God chose these people uh, uh, and, and, and sacrificed. Others were sacrificed, but these individuals were saved. They were brought out. You remember the, 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 the destroyer going through Egypt and those didn't, that didn't have blood on their lintel, uh, the, death, the death angel went into their houses. And so, but, but those who had uh, the blood of the lamb, right or passed over and so we are we are precious to God we are honored right in in his sight that and, and we should we should treat it that way and this is this is what encourages us so if God if God spared us right so as to save us why would he leave us and why would he forsake us why do we fear in the face of adversity when God has already spared our life? We had no fear when we were in darkness. We were reckless. We were destructive. We were having fun as we thought. But God spared us. We had no thought. Right? That we would not make it from point A to point B. And we lived in that arena. But now that we are children of God. We somehow think God is suspect. That he won't do what he said. But he watched over us before we knew him. Before we prayed a prayer. Before we called on his name. He was watching over us and protecting us. Even when we were faithless. As I read to you early. He spared our lives. So Israel should understand and Judah should understand this respectively, right? Verse 10, again from the NIV translation. God says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe, believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. Verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. Verse 12. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. And again, I want to pack, unpack this language here um, that Isaiah is using. Uh, so we can understand uh, uh, the, these, these terms here and why the Lord is calling them uh, his witnesses and his servant. So sometimes in the book of Isaiah, uh, he applies the idea of the servant uh, to an individual yet to come. So this future servant will be identified as Jesus Christ. You can see that in Matthew 12, 17 uh, through 21, uh, quoting Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 4. But here, as we're reading, the servant refers broadly to Israel as a collective singular, right? 
for the plural ye uh, and you can also see this in uh, Isaiah chapter 41 verses 8 and 9 and then chapter 45 verse 4 so God's mighty acts made Israel the witness for the Lord to all other nations so the law the law required two or three witnesses to convict someone of a crime you can see that in Deuteronomy 19 and 15 and compare that with John chapter 8 verse 17 uh, but in this case in Israel God um, had the whole nation of witnesses here was evangelism even in the Old Testament right we think evangelism is a new testament sort of concept and principles but no it was an Old Testament fundamental right and this is what the Lord is saying here and this was the responsibility that Israel and Judah respectively had to witness right they were called not only to be saved but they were called to proclaim they were called to live right as witnesses and so God is saying you may know and believe me and understand that that I'm that I am who I am right so there was no other God before me and there won't be one after me so this is the purpose of, of, of redemption this is the more broader context of redemption never ever think you are saved for yourself right it's it's not such an individual act to be enjoyed by the believer alone but it is to be shared right within community it is to be shared among the nations you look at Matthew 28 18 through 20 why does Jesus say go ye therefore teach all nations right it's so much bigger than we think and we should take pride in the fact that God chose us sanctified us declared us holy established us as lights and then strategically place us in dark places and sometimes we say well why God would you put me over here well the people in darkness need to be able to see their way out and you are that light right so this is what we are called for and this is why uh, uh, one of the reasons why uh, that Judah ended up in captivity as well as Israel because they were profaning the Lord's name they were being a deterrent to community they were they were set apart when they came out of Egypt under Moses and Joshua and so on they were given laws commandments statutes ordinances so they would have principles God did not want them living as heathens without any principles God gave them structured lives so they could live this thing out in community and cause others to say what must I do to be saved and this is the purpose of our lives and this is what causes God to become angry when we are not doing what we should be doing to cause others to come to Christ right don't want to minimize you as an individual what I'm sharing with you is just is bigger than you it's bigger than you it's bigger than me so God places us he has such confidence in you such honor as it has been established in the text to place you in a position of salvation and then turn around and place you in a, 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 a geographically if you will in a place where you could cause others to give their lives to Christ I hope trust and pray that this lesson has been worthwhile uh, certainly has been enlightening for you uh, that you might be able to understand where we are going here and what the text has to offer but I want to share lastly uh, something I read here in the lesson and I think it sticks out to all of us 
It is not God's responsibility to declare himself to the world. Rather, it is the duty of every believer, those who have received the gifts of his redemption, love, and mercy, to rise as his witnesses and declare him to the world. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for how you have blessed us to see another day, another year, another season, another time. We realize that many have fallen by the wayside, but God, you have left us here for yet another time and an opportunity of your choosing that we might be witnesses. And we thank you for this lesson today. We, God, we ask your forgiveness of our shortcomings in the mighty name of Jesus. Certainly we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God but we are asking you O God to blot out those spots and 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 straighten out the wrinkles O God in our lives in our hearts and our in our minds that we might be even in this new year better and effective witnesses to cause if it's nothing but one soul to come to Jesus Christ we thank you for sparing our lives today and we continue to lift up each and every family each and every one in their own walk in their own ministry whatever gift that you have given them we continue to pray for our country to for, for our environments for our family members for those who have gone astray even in the body of Christ who have failed to understand the preciousness of what you have done in their lives God we ask your forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus help us to do the things that are pleasing in your sight help us to be able to cause others to come to thee in the mighty name of Jesus that people might be saved through the cross of Jesus Christ and we can never ever forget that sacrifice and the shedding of that blood and uh, that we might have this right to the tree of life and not only that Jesus died on, uh, on, on Calvary but on the third day he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands and God we thank you for the responsibility that you have placed upon our lives today and we want to be able to do the things that you have called us called us to do that we might be able to share our faith God from our homes to the farthest ends of this earth we thank you for such a selection and such an election to this grace and this mercy that we don't deserve but by it we have come this far in Jesus name we pray Amen. God bless you, saints. Just know that I love you. Do your homework. Do your study and see what the Lord will open up to you. And ask the Lord what would he have for you to do. And remember, you are somebody in the body of Christ. And you have a work to do. Be about your father's business. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.